what's up? It's Steve Sleepy C from GiantScaleNews.com. The shop's looking a little messy and I got a beer head on, so that means only one thing. It's build time. So this is part two of the Great Plains Satabria 30-35cc gasoline ARF. And uh, I sat down and went through the manual just to make sure there was no surprises in store for me. And I also like to always make sure I'm going to have all the supplies I need, because there's nothing that sucks more than having to run out to the hobby store in the middle of a good build session. So made sure I had all the glues I need, everything else, and I was pretty much ready to go, so I jumped right in. Uh, the manual has you starting with the main wings. Uh, once again, there's no surprises. Pretty straightforward, just like we saw in the unboxing review. Um, everything's pretty much done for you. All the hinging on the wings, the flaps, everything is taken care of. So basically, all you're doing is installing servos, running the servo leads, and then uh, making the, the control rods. Uh, now this airplane, since it is more of a scale airplane, you wouldn't want your servos just hanging out of the wings. So Great Plains went ahead and thought of that. And they're using a tray system, which is very popular. It's been around for a long time. You simply mount some hardwood blocks, glue them in, and then screw them into this, this tray. Your servo is going to mount to that. You're going to put it in there. And all you're going to see on the other side is just the control horn sticking out, as you can see over here. Uh, great scale looking uh, way to use this to mount the servos. Uh, only thing I can give you a tip, make sure you pre-drill all your hardwood and anything that you're putting into it, that way it doesn't crack when you're putting your screws in. If you really want to make it secure and sturdy too, maybe dump a little uh, light CA into the hole after you remove the screw, let it dry, and then put the screw back in. And that's even going to harden that hardwood even more and give you a really, really secure connection. When you're running your servo leads, Great Plains went ahead and they, they put some string in there for you, so all you have to do is tie it into your servo leads and pull it down through. Now, with this size of a wing, you're going to need some extensions, and guys, don't just tape the extensions together. That's just a, a, a recipe for disaster. Get yourself some shrink wrap, put the extension together, shrink wrap it, and then you never have to think about it again. Another little thing I like to do is with a wing that has multiple servos, in this case it's a flap and an aileron, I just mark the ends, A and F, that way you always know which one's what, and you're good to go. So pretty much all that straightforward, nobody should have a problem doing that at all. The only thing that you might have a little question about, and some guys might not like actually, but I'm telling you it's fine, is that the, the push rods that come with the kit are 440 on one side and then you have to solder the other side. Now I know some of you guys are like, oh man, that's probably not going to work. It actually does, it works great and it's been around for years and there's planes flying that are 25 years old that were soldered 25 years ago that still have no issues. Uh, one thing I can recommend though is definitely get yourself a torch um, to do it properly. You're really going to want to heat that up and have the solder pull through the connection and make a solid joint. So I went ahead and you just get yourself a, a benzomatic torch and uh, some good solder and some rosin. And actually the manual that Great Plains includes has a really good tutorial on how to do it. So if you haven't done it before, read it a few times and if you do, I'm sure it'll be quite successful. And once you do it, everything works out great. The flaps have amazing amount of throw. This, this airplane should be able to slow down to a crawl. Ailerons have plenty of throw for this type of airplane and uh, everything's good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on and do the second half of this wing and then we're going to see how else we can get done here in part two. So uh, give me a minute. I'm going to get this other wing done and then we're going to jump into the next section. All right, thanks for tuning in guys. We're going to keep going. All right, guys, we're back, Steve, Sleepy C, and uh, we've been working pretty hard on this airplane. We went ahead and finished the second side of the main wing, so everything was exactly the same. Everything's ready to go. All the surfaces moved just as they're supposed to. Uh, one of the things I noticed, and this is kind of, at first I thought maybe there was a mistake in the kit, but of course there wasn't. Um, the ailerons, the hatches, uh, they're opposite of each other, which is the way it should be on both sides. But then when I got to the flaps, they're both the same, meaning that the opening is on the right-hand side on both. And at first I thought, wow, man, they messed up and they sent me the wrong hatch cover. But after thinking about it, the reason they did this is so you could put both of your flap servos in and have them moving in the same direction. That way, if you don't have a radio with a lot of channels on it, you can just use a Y and the servos will be moving in the same direction and uh, your flaps will operate at the same time. 
So if you see that, it's not a mistake, it's exactly the way it should be. So once the main wing's done, the manual tells you to go ahead and grab the fuselage. So we did, pulled it out, and I got to look over it again. And a couple things actually surprised me, even though this thing's been sitting there, uh, you know, for a week. So the cowl's just stuck, let me take this off. So, most of the time with a high-wing airplane, you have a kind of a hard time getting to the gas tank, putting your, your um, servos in for your throttle, your choke, just dealing with any of that stuff up front. Well, Great Plains thought of that, and the whole front windscreen just comes right off. It's got uh, rare earth magnets all the way down here. It's not going anywhere. And then it's got a couple of dowel rods up front. So now, with this off and the wing off, you have complete access to the inside of this airplane. There is no problem installing your, your choke servo, your throttle servo, your fuel tank, any of that. And uh, great idea, guys. And once again, to put this on, bop, fun. So speaking of gas tanks, I called up my buddy Jason Donhockel from Fortitude RC. And I asked him, I go, hey, did you hear about this gasoline bag thing? He said, sleep. No, the only bags that need to be around a gas tank are the ones that my tanks come in. So he went ahead and sent me over a fuel tank and also a smoke tank because when you have a Stavrio, you got to run smoke. So uh, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with the stock tank that comes with this airplane, but we're going to go ahead and run uh, <laughs> the very easiest to ever put in. You just take it out of the, the bag and uh, you put the tank in the airplane. So we're going to definitely run uh, some Fortitude tanks in there and a smoke tank. And this weekend we'll be picking up a new smoke pump and I'll show you guys that as well. So, alright, so after we got through all that, went ahead and did the back of the airplane. Vertical and horizontal stabs. Uh, really nothing, nothing to tell you. I mean, it was very simple, straightforward. Um, oh, for the first time ever, I did use a technique that they highlighted in the manual, and that was to use a kind of a real uh, thin pointed um, uh, soldering iron to cut the film. Usually I would have used a, number, a brand new number 11 blade and carefully dragged it along the film, just putting enough pressure to cut it so I could take the film off where the glue has to be. But you do run the risk of possibly scoring the wood and that could end up bad later on. So I tried this method with a, a, a soldering iron set to as hot as it could go and just gently ran it down with a, a, a ruler in the area and it just melted the film right away. It kind of seals it into the wood for you too so it's not going to peel back and it did a great job and I didn't score the wood whatsoever. So the vertical stab, horizontal stab, that, was, that method was used on both of those. Um, everything went together as it should. Uh, they're using the uh, Dubrow, Dubrow style hinges, these guys here. And uh, you know, there's the simple pin hinge. And in the manual they suggest using a little 3 in 1 oil on them or something like that. Just to get into the hinge so when you're gluing it in with your 30 minute epoxy it doesn't get in there and get stuck. I did that this time because I had it, but if you don't, another really nice tip is if you have any Vaseline laying around, if you have a young baby or something and they're in the house, you can put a little dab of Vaseline and then hit it with a lighter for one second and it'll melt that Vaseline into the hinge and then you won't have any stuck hinges when you, uh, when you use your uh, uh, epoxy. Another thing, I'm sure all you guys know this, but if you don't, if you're new to this or whatever, anytime you're building an ARF, you definitely want to have some rubbing alcohol around. The higher the percentage, the better. Because anytime you're using epoxy, this will just take it completely away. So if you get some mess on the airplane after you put the hinges in and the glue's there, just grab yourself a paper towel, grab a little bit of the uh, rubbing alcohol, wipe it down, and it's as good as new. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. We have the vertical and horizontal stabs, everything's hinged, everything's ready to go. The main wing's ready to go. Uh, it's on our feet. And we're going to continue on in the next video, uh, the third installment. But right now I got a pack, I'm hitting the road, I'm going to go see a bunch of buddies this weekend and have a really good time doing the airplane thing. So, uh, alright, that's it man, Steve Sleepy C, GiantScaleNews.com, this was installment 2, main wing and fuselage, and the next installment we'll pick it up and continue from there. Thanks for watching.